So unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know that in order to lose body fat, we need to create a calorie deficit. The problem though usually isn't the knowing, it's the doing, it's the practical stuff where so many get lost and distracted and usually end up giving up. And that's why in this video, I'm gonna share with you three simple rules for getting lean that I wish everybody out there knew, including myself, when I first got started. These rules will help you be more consistent and finally get this done. Now diving into it, the first one we need to talk about is something I call the 50% commitment rule. Let me give an example of this. Joe currently weighs 200 pounds, which is about 90 kilograms. He's not happy and he wants to get lean. He does some math and figures out that his maintenance is around 2,800 calories per day. And he wants to get down to 170 pounds, which is about 70, 70 kilograms. So he sets his target to 2,000 calories per day. He also cleans up his diet, starts lifting four or five times per week and walking 10,000 steps per day. All those are really big changes for Joe and they actually start working. He soon finds himself down to 190 pounds, which is about 86 kilograms, and he's very happy with that early success. But as time goes by, he's realizing that the lower he gets from 190, that he's getting hungrier, especially later in the day in the evenings and then on the weekends. It's becoming harder to resist the temptations. He's finding that he's cutting corners, the food drive is increasing, and he's having these little cheats here and there. Now he's still losing weight, but it's not as fast as it used to be. And then soon after those, Little cheats start becoming bigger cheats. Also, life gets in the way. There's more things going on. There's more stress. And Joe realizes that the scale isn't moving anymore. And this is where he gets really frustrated because he knows that 2,000 calories works for him, but he simply can't stick with it. He does it for a while, loses a little bit of weight, but then falls off track and regains that weight. So he sees that the scale keeps coming back to the same number and that he's basically stuck. Now, this is where the 50% commitment rule comes in. And the rule goes like this. If you can't be consistent with what you're doing right now, cut the commitment in half. And in Joe's case, that means that his initial commitment of 2000 calories and an 800 calorie deficit needs to go down to a 400 calorie deficit. And in order to know the target, he needs to recalculate his maintenance because he's lost some weight. And so his new maintenance, when he recalculates at 190 pounds and 86 kilos, becomes 2700 calories per day. So he takes 2700 minus 400, which brings him to 2300 calories per day. So it's 300 calories more than his initial target. Now he has more food available, he's still in a deficit, but he can be a bit more flexible, hunger is less of an issue, he's actually able to build some momentum, start becoming more consistent, and he starts seeing results again. And the fact that he's seeing results again does wonders for his motivation and his overall commitment to the journey. He's no longer stuck, he's moving forward. And as simple as this sounds, most people are very hesitant to ever consider increasing their calories during a fat loss phase. They think it labels them as a failure, that they're throwing in the towel, they're gonna automatically regain all the body fat. So you're gonna rather continue failing and trying to grind it out instead of switching to something more sustainable. This is a huge mistake. When you have real world feedback that your current approach isn't working, you need to cut your losses as soon as possible before you waste any more time. More often than not, what you'll find out is that you simply overestimated how much you could do and you underestimated the difficulty. And there's nothing wrong with that. Make the smart move, iterate, cut the commitment in half, and then as you build more momentum and consistency with the new level of commitment, you can always decide to do more later. Now, the second rule we need to talk about is fundamentals always come first. Remember, 95% of your fat loss results will come from these seven things. Eating in a moderate calorie deficit to get half a percent to 1% of your body weight loss per week. Making sure you're retaining your muscle by lifting weights and also eating a high protein diet increasing your sleep and reducing stress, eating a healthy diet, high protein, high fiber, and unprocessed foods, eating slower and more mindfully so you get fuller, walking eight to 12,000 steps per day, and tracking your progress. Unless you're focusing on these seven things first, you're literally wasting your time. It always amazes me to see how many people are still looking for that best way to lose belly fat in a week or other nonsense like that. Don't let yourself get distracted by all the noise. Ignore the supplements, the detoxes, the BS fat diets, the random three-day cleansing protocols or ab workouts with a gazillion crunches promising you a six-pack. Consistency with fundamentals beats everything else. And by discarding the BS, you'll have 
have more mental energy to focus on things that truly matter. And if you get these seven things right, and if you hit that like button, I promise you, you'll be shocked to see how the results just keep coming. And the best part, you're building habits that will keep you lean with a healthier lifestyle long term. Now, the third rule we need to talk about is growth happens in discomfort. What I mean by this is that it's pretty easy to log your meals and track your progress and do your workouts when you're feeling great. When the scale is going down, you have the momentum, you're focused, life is simple, you have the time and everything is awesome. But where logging accountability and doing the work matter the most is on your worst days, when you're feeling emotionally and physically drained, when the scale isn't going down, when you're demotivated, when logging a meal is the last thing you wanna do and there are plenty of excuses to choose from and you still decide to push through and do it anyway, that's really where you make the biggest difference and learn how to be consistent. And that's an essential skill for your long-term success because you're not always gonna feel like doing it. And you can also get better at this skill by practicing something Naval Ravikant calls making uphill decisions. When you have two options, you deliberately choose to take the one that's more difficult in the short term. And by doing that, you're overriding our natural instinct to avoid what's uncomfortable. And you're letting that discomfort help you grow because you're not really growing that much by just doing things that you're already good at within your comfort zone. The biggest growth potential is in those difficult situations, dealing with those bad days, bouncing back, that's when you truly learn how to be consistent. As Les Brown said a very long time ago, if you do what's easy, your life will be hard. If you do what's hard, your life will be easy. And one bad day doesn't mean that you're instantly back to day one. Nothing will take away your experience and all the things that you've already learned and mastered. So you wanna make sure you regroup, get back on track, continue improving and learning, and results will come. It's also gonna help with those results, making sure you hit that subscribe button below, enable notifications by hitting the bell icon, details for coaching if you wanna work with me on your journey, on the description below. Also leave another helpful video here for you at the end, so check out that video, and I'm gonna see you right there.